Welcome to Slovenia. Now, I'm here in Ljubljana over the next few days on quite a big film shoot for BMW. Um, unfortunately, the stuff that we're filming is, uh, I'm told, absolutely top secret, which is really exciting, but I'd love to be able to share it with you. I'm sure I will at some point, but today is a relatively relaxed day because I haven't got my first thing until this afternoon, a couple of meetings and then a fitting with the, <laughs> fitting with the stylist. <laughs> Sentences I never thought I'd be saying. Um, so I always like to try and see a city whenever I'm in it, if I can. I've never been here before. And I like to do that by going for a run, if I can uh, possibly fit it in. So I've found a spot about 45 minutes from here that looks really high up on a hill overlooking the city. I bought myself a new drone the other day, so we're gonna try and get all of this stuff, the drone, the camera, whatever else I need, up to the top of this hill, um, and hopefully furnish you with some stunning cinematic shots of this wonderful city. I've popped out, so I've popped out to try and buy a, a rucksack because I want to take my drone, I want to take my camera, I want to take all my gear up to this top of this hill. Problem is everything's shut, uh, at least for another 15 minutes when some things open. Um, so let's talk Formula One. And one of the things that popped up this morning is that Pirelli have notified all of the teams that they want to use uh, Friday of the British Grand Prix, the second one I think that is, uh, and also the Spanish Grand Prix to test a new type of tyre for 2021. Now originally, the same tyres that we have now, which of course are the same tyres that we had last year in 2019, were going to stay right through till the end of 2021. But Pirelli have now realised that given that in these first couple of races we've had, already we're seeing the 2020 cars take a giant leap forward in terms of performance, certainly some of them. Um, and therefore they expect that even though the regulations next year are designed with these changes to the rear of the floor to peg back the car's performance to limit the amount of downforce or even reduce the amount of downforce they can create by making it much harder to seal the underside of the floor and therefore maximize the downforce created by the diffuser, they think that given that Formula One teams, this is what they do, by the end of 2021, there could be even still, despite those changes, a significant step forward in terms of performance, particularly given what the performance was like when these tires were originally designed. And therefore, they want to be able to improve the integrity of the tires, to be able to make them work under even faster conditions, under even more load. Um, and so, whilst they're not changing the complete construction, they're not changing the complete design, they want to take an hour out of each of the practice sessions on those two Grand Prix to force the teams to spend that hour develop or testing at least these new options on tyres. From the data and the feedback they receive, they will then make a call and sign off the tyre that they think will be suitable for 2021 and then we'll see it next year. So not a dramatic change, but definitely something that Pirelli are concerned about given the dramatic increase in performance. Lap records being smashed to pieces, aren't they, already? Okay, got myself a bag. Might be just about big enough to put everything in. Let's go for a run. All right, so I've definitely bought a bag that is too small for what I need but I'll have to get the essentials in. Drone, I will do a full kind of review on the Mavic Mini, by the way, uh, which so far looks awesome. Yeah. Uh, that's all great, but what I haven't got in is the camera that I'm currently filming on, <laughs> which is huge. Okay, I'll work that out. Let's get on the way, go and explore. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm utterly broken. That was a lot steeper and longer than I thought it was gonna be. Oh, this looks good though. 
That looks like good views. All right, and that looks like a good spot to collapse. One of the things I love about my job is traveling, seeing new places, and I always love to try and explore whenever I can. It's one of the things I love about Formula One. That's what it brings, travel around the world, seeing some amazing places. And so, on that note, I'd love to know what you think about the proposal that was put to Formula One by Silverstone, where they suggested they could hold 12 Grand Prix this year at the Northamptonshire circuit. What do you think? I mean, it's an amazing track, don't get me wrong. I love seeing racing around Silverstone. Everybody loves racing around Silverstone. But 12? That seems like a lot. I mean, I'm really pleased they've managed to get a calendar put together that's now starting to show some amazing racetracks. Some racetracks we never thought would be on the calendar. Some that have been on it previously that are coming back. Can't wait to see cars around Portimao. I think Mugello will be fantastic. You know, some of these are not going to lend themselves to the most overtaking opportunities and racing at some places uh, may be tight, may be difficult. Imola is one of those circuits, but at some of them, it's still going to be a great spectacle. Portimao, particularly Mugello, I think it's going to be fantastic when it comes to Saturday. So I'm really pleased that they pushed on, that they managed to make the sacrifices and put all the effort in to get a, an extended calendar over some fantastic circuits. But I'd love to know what you think. 12 races at Silverstone? Well, it was an epic run up a very steep climb to get here. I was absolutely broken by the time I got to the top, but it was worth it. Beautiful spot, beautiful views. What an amazing city this appears to be in the short space of time I've had to look at it. But because it took me a lot longer to get here, um, I'm going to have to set off and make my way all the way back down. Um, I've got no Wi-Fi up here, so I can't get a map up. So I'm kind of guessing my way back, but... I know it's down, that's for sure. <sighs> I'm broken, destroyed. <laughs> um, normally when I go running, as I do quite regularly at home, I normally run for five or six K at a time. I don't know how far that was, but, well, longer than that, let's say and uh, somewhat vertical for a lot of it. There we go, got hideously lost on the way home, um, but I will say that the people of Slovenia, the people of Ljubljana here, thank you. You are all beautiful people, very, very friendly. Uh, I have met, even just on that little excursion today, a number of extremely nice, friendly people who've all helped me out, <laughs> pointing me in the right direction, and I'm very grateful to you all. Um, so far from what I've seen, this is a beautiful country, even just flying in, um, over the mountains and lakes. It's a place that I want to come back already and spend some more time in. So there we go, hopefully you'll get that chance. Um, right, I am, uh, I've got to get showered, get changed, and then go for my meetings and, and to be styled. <laughs> but first, I just thought I'd quickly flick through uh, the Seedstream app just to see what was happening. I've just done it. And there's a couple of stories. So I've been talking about the races that were canceled and those that have replaced them. There's a storm brewing um, between the promoter of the Brazilian Grand Prix and Formula One, Chase Carey. Um, there is talk um, that the promoters from Sao Paulo are suggesting there is no reason they should have had their race cancelled. They're saying that the numbers of infections of COVID-19 in that particular locality are low, um, lower than England, he says. Uh, and therefore, he's suggesting that the reason the race was cancelled with no notice, as far as they were concerned, was because of ulterior motives, in that this is the final year of Sao Paulo's contract with Formula One, and they believe that Chase Carey has a desire to move the race from Sao Paulo to Rio, and therefore the current promoters of the Sao Paulo Grand Prix suggesting that that might be one of the reasons they've actually cut Brazil from the calendar this year. Anyway, we might see that one rumbling on for a while. Um, there's a story about Latifi being disappointed, of course, because he's now lost his home race with Canada being cancelled. A great Grand Prix. I think many people would be disappointed about that one. Uh, the US Grand Prix equally has been cancelled, but you know you, you can't really argue with those decisions because of the, the state of the pandemic in those areas. Um, but there we go. Um, talking about Mugello, though, one of the circuits that's replaced uh, some of those on the calendar, Matteo Bonotto, 
Ferrari team principal has, has said that um, he's talked about how the circuit is really demanding. Uh, of course, they went there, didn't they, to do a, a shakedown before the restart of Formula One. And one of the things he's suggesting is that the lap record around that circuit, which has stood since 2004 from Rubens Barrichello, which is currently uh, a 118.7 uh, from Rubens, all that time ago, 2004, no one's broken that. Um, of course, that record is highly likely to be broken, probably smashed this year with a faster 2020 cars. Uh, Bonotto saying that um, when they were there doing their shakedown, he says the Ferrari, given that the Ferrari is definitely not a front running car, the Ferrari did a very similar lap time with full tanks and really not pushing uh, around that same circuit. So it's going to be interesting when we get there with these faster cars, when we go for the all out blitz of pole position on the Saturday, that record is highly likely to be absolutely destroyed. And the, the point that I went on to think about after that is that the record could then stand for quite some time into the future because when we get to the new set of regulations for 2022, we're going to see slower cars. Yeah, we hope we're going to see more exciting cars that can follow each other more closely and the racing could be more of a spectacle, but they will be slower. And therefore, whoever sets that lap record, both at Mugello and at other circuits uh, this year, could well be the holder of that, uh, that record for some time to come. Uh, so that's quite interesting. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. Andreas Seidel's been talking about how triple headers in Formula 1 should not become the norm. We shouldn't see this season as setting a precedent, and he's absolutely right. Um, it, was it was a necessity to get the calendar done, really, to try and fit in some triple headers this year. But I've already talked about how that's a massive challenge for the teams. And um, whilst a lot of you replied to my messages last time I did a video saying people in Formula One should stop moaning, you know, they've got their dream jobs, they need to get on with it, and uh, there are loads of people who are ready to step in and take their places. Yeah, of course there are, and, and you know, I appreciate that. Everybody, I think, in Formula One does appreciate how lucky they are. I know I did when I got my dream job, you know, I was determined to never ever take it for granted. But having said all of that, there's a human side to all of this, there's a, a health um, side to this, both physical and mental, emotional, um, the being away from friends and, and family and loved ones, kids. Um, there's the being pushed to the absolute limits, physically but also mentally, because as I've talked about before, one Grand Prix is enough to you know, destroy you and you can go home broken as a person at the end of it. A back-to-back, -back, you know, can double that. And a triple header, well, we don't really know the effects of having multiple triple headers on the human side of Formula One yet, but I hope it's not too serious, but it could be. And so we do need to make sure that this doesn't carry over and become the norm just because it's a, a way to squeeze more races in for those who can make the money out of them. Um, so that was interesting. Uh, and then the final one I want to talk about was um, Marcus Ericsson talking about how F1 should adopt the aero screen. He, of course, has moved from Formula 1 to IndyCar, where they do use the Red Bull-developed aero screen, and he says it's better. He says Formula 1 should use it. And his main argument for that is that it's safer. That one is difficult to disagree with, isn't it? Because you're completely enclosed and so small bits of debris can bounce off that screen. Whereas with a halo, we can still get bits that will come through the gaps in that halo and potentially damage a driver. Now, I'm not sure that one looks any better than the other. I think we've all got used to a, a halo very quickly. It's part of Formula One. I don't think we talk about it anymore because it's not a talking point. So in terms of the look, Whatever we choose, I don't think it's a massive factor. We've got to have something because it's been introduced, we know it exists, and when something that's going to make the racing safer exists, we kind of have to have it. But I'd love to know what you think. Aero screen developed by Red Bull, or the halo that we currently use, would you like to see Formula One take a new look? And of course, they did have a look when they were assessing the two options before introducing the halo. Would you like to see them have another look at the aero screen now that it's been pushed and developed in IndyCar? And do you agree with Marcus Ericsson? It should make a comeback into Formula One. Let me know, and I'd love to know what you think on all of these subjects that I've covered today. Um, I have got to go and start getting ready because I have got to go and do some work. This is not a holiday, although it seemed like it today. <laughs> um, but I hope you uh, have enjoyed the video today. I'd love to know what you think, as I say, on all of those things. I don't know if I'm going to get a live stream done tomorrow, Monday. Um, I'm reliant on hotel Wi-Fi. I'll do a test later. 
Uh, but if it's not stable enough, I may have to skip it again this week, so apologies if that happens. Um, maybe we'll try and do an Instagram Live or something like that, if I can do it on my phone, we'll see. Anyway, I'll let you know, so keep an eye on all my socials uh, for any info and updates on that. Have a great remainder of your weekend. Have a good few days until I see you again. Ta-da!